Welcome to IGM Guru. IGM Guru is one of the global leading online training and certification provider for IT expert by the skilled IT gurus to help them achieve their professional goals. Uh, welcome to this today's demo session, right? And now we are going and talking about Salesforce billing part. Okay. So uh, just a little bit background about it, right? Which we will discuss definitely in, in during the training much more in detail. So this is nothing but as a managed package, uh, and it's basically the solution was developed by a company called Invoice IT. Uh, that's an a UK based company and which was acquired by Salesforce. Uh, earlier it was acquired by Steelbrick and then Steelbrick was acquired by Salesforce. That is how this particular solution came into Salesforce stack. Solution stack, okay. So primarily uh, this entire solution is basically um, going to or is right now running on a Salesforce platform, right? Um, and early days, uh, in order to implement billing, you definitely in your project CPQ must be there. And on top of it, this billing was working. But nowadays, uh, seeing the constraint in the number of clients because this is a dependency, because many clients in the industry, they just want billing solution. They don't want CPQ for some reason, or maybe they have implemented CPQ for different vendor, not just for CPQ, maybe the actors or other CPQ. So that was the challenge. So in order to mitigate that last year, what Salesforce did was that CPQ is no more um, prerequisite or no more, as I say, mandatory part to uh, for Salesforce billing to work, okay? So that is how the Salesforce billing separated nowadays. So now even if you have any other CPQ in the system, uh, of course, you can do the Salesforce billing on top of it, okay? So that's a very little bit background how, when, and all those things will talk much more detail during the training part. Uh, so one quick question before going deep dive into like what are the things we are going to cover, the very common question uh, most of the time I hearing like, uh, okay, so do I need to learn CPQ first, then I will come to billing. Well, if you ask me, of course, uh, if you want to get understand everything into it, that's always a good or better choice. But again, the billing is a different skill set. Um, you can be specialized just in the billing. As I said, now billing is no more dependent on CPQ, so you can have just a billing, uh, of course. Uh, uh, but if you say, no, I want to understand the entire project, the whole flow and all and all, then definitely, CPQ would be a better choice uh, along with billing, okay? Because of course, uh, at the end of the day, uh, you are basically going and talking about sales. Based on that, you are generating invoice. Based on the orders, you are generating invoice. So CPQ will involve at certain point of time and uh, that might be sales for CPQ or any other CPQ. But considering the trend of the project, uh, most of the clients, uh, if they are using Salesforce CPQ, they are going with the Salesforce billing and vice versa. The reason we talk a lot during the uh, training part, uh, why, because the implementation would be easier in that case, we'll talk much more detail in the training, right? I will not go there why this preference and or why not that preference or what will happen if it is a different CPQ versus billing system. Okay, so just a little bit background because why I just started this topic was CPQ is of course no matter what vendor you are selecting, it's a tightly coupled with billing. Okay, and that is why our first topic is Salesforce uh, CPQ and the billing overview. So if you if you do not have the CPQ background, that's also that's okay uh, uh, for now because uh, I will try like to you know give the crux of the CPQ and the uh, areas which are connected with the billing. I will talk about it, right? Because at the end of the day, as I said, the every initiation will start from CPQ only, right? The order placement and everything happens via CPQ that will come to billing. So that is how we'll cover. If you have already learned or already new CPQ, that's fine. Else not, then the first one or two session will try to cover all the important uh, pointers which will affect the billing part from the CPQ side which involves like some of the important fields on product, how you are going doing the quotation, how you are going in placement orders and all, okay? 
and that will leads to the second topic the orders this is the most uh, or as i say the without that billing can not be happen so here we will talk about and as i said the orders and invoice are very tightly coupled so we'll talk about all the orders features uh, though it's a part of cpq and during the training we will have or we will use salesforce cpq plus salesforce billing no other sales, no other cpq because if there is a different cpq then different integrations and other things will be required on maybe the data flow logic will be required so we'll not go there we'll use the salesforce cpq uh, to cover this part your order and uh, the other product stuffs once we'll cover the order we'll go to the invoice generation and when we are this is the point where we are hitting the salesforce billing okay so of course during the transition you have to understand what is the relation between order and invoice how the data is following uh, uh, flowing from one entity to another entity uh, what are the factors that are affecting to going and generating the invoicing and all right comprises multiple factors like billing date next billing date and invoice run and all and all there are multiple things which we will go and talk about it and once you understand the relationship the field mapping and everything will then will go with the invoice generation part right where you will actually going and generating the invoices but in the invoice generation also there are multiple things like uh, you can schedule the invoice you can split the invoice you can you know um, having you know automate in generation of the invoices there are multiple things that we will cover as a part of invoice generation now invoice generation uh, is is little bit different for uh, different types of product like a subscription based products where you have to do uh, in part suppose i bought a product for a year and that is a monthly based product right so you will end up creating 12 invoices right every year, month you will send one invoice to a vendor or to sorry to the customer right whereas if it is a one time product so suppose you have bought one uh, appliance for your home then you will just buy that product you pay the full payment so you will get one invoice whereas let's say your internet or mobile phones where every month you are getting the invoices so who is handling all those things that is the billing is and because sales has already happened at the order level so the order i mean the plan or let's say the antivirus i bought it for one year two year or five year but i am saying that i need monthly or quarterly invoice so that maybe the life cycle for the quotation or the order is done but the invoice will not done it will keep sending the invoices for every month and also based on the product type your invoicing nature will change and so as the with the usage as well so usage based products are those products where you have to pay whatever you have used so who will consume and tracking your usage how it will come to the billing system and then how uh, the billing system will use that data to generate the invoices okay um while doing that there are multiple lines of fields or the which affects the pricing as i said right suppose uh, when i sold any licensed product i said okay for 12 months you have to pay 1200 dollar right so one year 1200 dollar but when i will send that invoice monthly what i have to take care of it it's a 100 dollar per month plus billing system will also take care of all the taxes right so which which we will talk about in the ninth point the taxes and any other extra expenses because at the end of the day when you will get any any invoice you will see the product price then the other taxes different surcharges and finally the final amount that any customer has to pay so those pricing fields we'll talk about it and uh, uh, that leads to let me jump in first here that leads to the legal entity and taxation also right so say billing has certain level of capability to calculate the taxes there is a tax module which we will talk about it the legal entity is there how we are getting the taxes and all right um, but there are certain uh, limitation i i will say uh, uh, within this tax uh, module which we will talk during the training and at what point you will need a separate tax engine what are the scenarios or business scenarios where billing will not do the taxation uh, there are other uh, systems like avalara whatx this system will do the taxation 
Now, even if you are using those systems, the integrations are like out of the box, means packages. Um, there is a way to connect these uh, two at least uh, tax engines with Salesforce billing that Salesforce has already provided that. But if you have a, your client has a basic, uh, you know, um, uh, details, then you can, they can use a simple tax engine. So we'll talk about it, win and all that is what we will cover. It's not just going to be theoretical guys, right? We will try to take all the different use cases which will talk about the feature as well as the limitation of the package. So that you will know at what point of time the order of the box solution will not work. Where I have to go for customization versus where I have to go to for the different vendor for having the different different features. So in most of the projects we are using the different tax engine because of the different reason which we will talk about it. Now after this, uh, uh, when the invoice will be generated where the order amount and the tax calculation happened, then the payment part. So payment gateway, there are multiple gateways will Salesforce billing support. Okay, like PGO, there are three, four payment gateways. If I'm talking about if you are talking electronic payments where you can do payments via credit card and um, debit card, all those things, right? But that also can, you know, billing can generate those, of course, with the help of different payment gateways, licensed third party vendor, which will, they will basically, uh, you know, um, uh, made for having the, these transactions. And of course, that transactions will automatically calculate it within the billing system. So while let's suppose in B2B, it's not like that. If you raise a hundred dollar invoice, they might just pay, let's say $20, $30, $40. Dollar. The remaining uh, $70 or $60 is in basically still pending. So those things definitely have to be there in the billing system, right? When I will raise the next time invoicing, I will include those um, that, uh, that that is still uh, the, the period part, right? So that is why every payment is keep tracking. Some clients have done or is doing in B2B advanced payment also, right? So, okay. Though I have given the $100 invoice, they just uh, do the payment of $200 and which they are saying, okay, that next $100 we, you have to compensate or adjust in my next order. So that is why all the payment histories, payment details are being captured in your billing, which we will talk about it. However, the, the, the banking transactions, right? Whenever I am putting the credit card detail, you will put it in the Salesforce billing, but that banking gateway hitting and all you need a payment gateway that's another license uh, that uh, client has to procure which we'll talk about it then once the payment happened then this is where right now i'm talking about the debit notes credit notes a very simple example right nowadays even if you notice suppose you bought something and there is a, some problem in that you want to either the entire refund the money Right or maybe um, nowadays every uh, you know vendors are saying okay I will credit it this amount in your wallet and um, uh, you can use it at any point of time, right? And in that case they are also giving you some uh, offer also if you are using the wallet then you will have this and that. So this all will going and happening where in the billing. So in your entire refund process. Uh, okay, if, and in, in which mode you have selected the refund, whether you want to be just a credit note allocation or there will be a debit notes, which we will discuss in much more detail. So this is all happening in the billing, which we will cover. And once it has been done, right? So where at the end of the day, all your finance will be tracked under the finance books, which is again the part of your billing. So basically like general laser entry, right? So like all the debits, credits, at the end of the day, this is the accounting book based on that. Company will understand there how they are going, right? How, what is the flow of the uh, capital, whether the company is running in loss, profit, all those things happening in the finance books and general laser entry. Okay, this is the way of the finance team uh, core finance team will come into the picture who will take care of it all those things now based on the above all the uh, you know transactions these things are getting recorded inside these general lasers and the finance book um, here you will see some big projects right where very complex industries they are not using billing for these three models because their revenue recognition and the accountings are so complex that they need some ERP systems which are very, very specialized in this section, right? 
so <clears throat> after this right um, uh, the data is going to, to the any let's say for an example netsuite or sap uh, erp systems like that where the data is are processing however these modules are there and of course small clients are using it and as a billing resource you should know these things so we'll talk about it we'll talk about it what are the features that are there uh, which cpq billing supports and we'll cover all those things okay so these are from the um, these are from the topic standpoint what we are going to cover as i said quickly and then i will open it for any questions if you have um, how we are going to cover so typically right it will be a session of let's say uh, an hour or hour and a half max right uh, and in this session right we'll share the screen like right now we are doing uh, we'll go and start everything from scratch by the way right there is no any org which is already built and all the solutions are already built and i will come and just display and show you it's not like that we'll go and create and scratch org starting from the package installation from prerequisite of installation to post steps right we'll do with you guys during the training itself so that you guys will also know in and out of the packages and from there onwards we'll do discuss different business solutions and any business solution will not be suffice unless it will start from the cpq scenario it means the point where i am selling anything if you notice right now also in some examples i, have, I am telling you at the time of sale this is how it, it got sold and now you have to do the billing because these are both tightly coupled as i said earlier during uh, starting of this session so we'll talk about those business use cases we'll try to configure those things starting from the product we'll see quickly the cpq journey of course we will not go do much detail in the cpq part otherwise uh, because cpq itself is a uh, is a huge and it's required a good amount of learning but we'll just see the transactional data we'll not too much focus on the uh, setup data because that's a cpq uh, specialist job is your billing team or you as a billing specialist after order the essential your journey starts which we will go and talk about it during the training okay and based on that eventually uh, you will get um, dummy project and like a, a day to day practice as and when any scenario or any topic we will cover i will give you those uh, uh, exercises so that you can go and try along with that you will get of course a session recording so that you can go and take a look and try that as well right and um, and then um, if you have any question doubt any any clarification you want to know we'll try to cover now this topic the last thing is will you, will it cover all the certifications uh, topic the answer is yes the topic it has all the um, content which will require for your certification also that is there um and of uh, well this org is freely available yes org is there uh, you do not have to you know do any extra payment for or any worry about the licensing cost that is there all you have to just go and install which i will help you from where you will install how you will install right all those stuffs will help you during the training okay with that uh, i will take a pause any question any doubt query please do let me know ashish how long is the license is a 90 day license for the trial org yeah yeah okay the second question you spoke about certification are you talking about the accreditation sorry uh, can you come again the last question is it an accreditation see typically uh, yeah so this is why i just mentioned that because uh, the topic wise as i just as i said right all the topics are there inside this mm -hmm. right which will of course it will help you for the self uh, preparation it's not like uh, we are preparing you or we are helping you the, this is the exam and all that right but right today uh, the idea is that first of all because if let's say there are 10 topics in certification and even okay. i didn't cover it so how you will know you will never know right right so this idea is considering two things of course the project is the primary because and that is the reason if you see the first two three uh, topics i'm just talking about the cpq because mm -hmm. that's required for projects without that 
you can't be able to understand end to end and then after that your billing talks about which will be of course certification also some topics so for an example like as i said so these things right very few clients are using this financial part okay uh -huh. but uh, if you ask me can i leave it for the projects part i will suggest okay it's the initial part you can leave for now but can you leave it for certification no so that is why it's a hybrid uh, i put it each and everything so that at least now you have all the content all the material all the understanding you have let's uh -huh. say after two months you want to prepare for certification so you will not feel hey this training or this guy did not cover these topics these are required uh -huh. for my and whenever i will touching any topic right topic by topic i will touch that and i will highlight that hey this is important for your project and this type of issues we got uh, just for our i mean that's for your learning that you will not repeat or you will be not in that situation or some topics are most important for your or just important for your certification right that's will i will try to highlight that and that's the reason i just mentioned that all the topics are there which are there in the certification plus of course the project training will be happening mostly on the project oriented so that is why where i will you know share some use cases some challenges that we faced at a time of implementation what are the transition happened one example i gave you right like salesforce in earlier you can't implement without salesforce certificate so the life cycle also because some projects older projects have that dependency so all those things we'll talk about it which will give you a real flavor of the project got it yeah thanks for watching the video for full course, please visit www.igmguru.com and enroll today.